The first thing about board game reviews is that there's no such thing as a good or a bad game. Now that may sound outrageous coming from somebody like me, somebody who compares games all the time. The next game on this list is so better than Wingspan and better than Meadow. Gripes or like even minor complaints about the game and yet the gameplay is devastating. Ticket to Ride feels like banana. Good versus bad, better versus worse. I must sound like such a hypocrite. I'll get to that. The first principle though, of board game reviews is that there's no good or bad games objectively speaking. It's all relative. It is up to the individual and what they like. Sort of like houses. There are no good or bad houses. There can be some houses that aren't up to code. And in board games, there may be some games with flawed design, or people might say that a game is broken because there's one route towards victory and the game is not fun because of that. But in terms of the design of the game, there's not good and bad games. Rather, every game has its own unique profile. Now what I've tried to do is reduce this profile to five attributes, which I talk about all of the time in this channel. Theme, mechanics, components, strategy, and complexity. There are additional attributes, but I think they're all just derivatives of these five. For example, luck. Luck is just a derivative of strategy. The more luck that gets added, the lower the strategy score. You can have a little bit of luck and strategy, but generally luck is a derivative of strategy. Or another one, interaction. Some games are much more interactive than others, which can be more isolated. That seems like a separate characteristic, but I think it is a derivative of mechanics. So that being said, I think Every game has these five attributes, and you can rate these five attributes, but it doesn't necessarily mean the game is good or bad. It's just a characteristic of the game. For example, a game with a low complexity rating doesn't make the game a bad game. It means it's an easier game and something that you can play with younger people, which is a good thing. And oftentimes in games such as those, there's a little bit more luck, a little bit less strategy, and that's excellent for family games. Or another example are games with a high theme rating and a lower mechanics rating, like many thematic games. Like on Mars, where the designer has put so much effort into making a thematic recreation of what would be involved to make a sustainable environment on Mars that the mechanics that support the game are numerous and complex and kind of difficult to grapple with. This is not as intuitive as a game with very high mechanics score, such as Dice Forge, which barely has a theme at all, but the entire mechanic is around forging dice. Every player can modify their dice and rolls their dice every turn to get the resources on the dice. The game is much less about story and much more about having fun rolling dice. When a game is driven by its mechanics, a high mechanics score, versus a game that's driven by its theme, a high thematic score. Very seldomly do you encounter a game that has both a high thematic and high mechanics score, such as Food Chain Magnate. Now there's one more point I wanna make about a game's profile. Just because I said there's no good games and bad games doesn't mean that every profile is equally as popular. For example, consider the game Clinic, which has a very high strategy rating and a very high complexity rating. This is a game that people would describe as very puzzly or has too much analysis paralysis. Many people wouldn't want to play a game that's this complex and this complex. <laughs> Even I have a difficult time convincing people to play this game and I love the game, but I also love games with high strategy and high complexity, which brings me to guideline number two. Every person has their own game profile. I call this their perfect board game formula, and that's what my app is all about. Finding your perfect board game. Not really the perfect board game, but your perfect board game. And if you want to look and see what your profile is, you can take the quiz, which I will leave links in the description. But let's use myself as an example. Probably the single most valued attribute, in my opinion, is how much strategy is involved. I can tolerate variances in every other 
attribute, but I really like games with middle to high strategy. Now, there are a lot of games out there with middle to high strategy, so to narrow them down, I think my second greatest priority is the game's theme. When a game has a creative or distinct theme, that really sets it apart as long as the theme is implemented in the game in such a way that it really comes through. But that doesn't mean that all of my games have high strategy and high theme. Some of them, where they're lacking in theme, they have high mechanics. Take, for example, Carnegie. Carnegie is very bland in its theme, but mechanically, it involves decision-making where every choice you make affects other players as well. So you can plan in such a way so that when other players choose actions, they provide benefits to you, and when you choose actions, you can try to minimize the benefits you give other players. There's just an excellent action selection mechanic in this game that make me more forgiving of its bland theme. So for me personally, it's about high strategy, high theme and or mechanics. And as far as components and complexity are concerned, I can tolerate greater variability in those attributes. But that only describes what I find personally satisfying. I have another role that I play, which is that of the board game dad in our house. And so for our family, they have a different game profile. For example, games like My Little Everdell or Meadow. Both of these games have high component scores, low complexity scores, and pretty high mechanic scores. Whereas theme and strategy, the two things that I find most satisfying are less present in these two games. Let's consider one more profile that a lot of people are familiar with, that of Board Game Geek. Board Game Geek has a major complexity bias, where board games that are more complex are more highly favored than board games that are simple. For example, consider the difference between these two games. Santorini and Twilight Struggle. Now, both of them are great strategy games. This game can take as long as four hours to play, and while it's very complex and has a lot of strategy, there's also a huge degree of luck involved in this game, which I personally would argue is very thematic, but a lot of people would say, why play a game that is so time-consuming when so much of what you do depends on luck? Whereas, Santorini, which is a simple game, pure strategy, can be played in less than 20 minutes, and this game is rated at 235, where Twilight Struggle is at about 13 right now. So there is a large discrepancy between the two. I think this game is better, but it's way simple. The rules I could summarize in one minute. The rules for this one would probably take me about an hour. But that brings me to my third guideline for board game reviews. And that is, when considering a game, one should be able to identify the strengths of a game, even if those strengths are outside of their own perfect board game formula. I try to do this all the time when I make recommendations for games that I love and I warn people why they might not like it, like Clinic, for example, or when I describe games that I really don't like at all, yet I can tell people why they might like it. Take Twilight Struggle. You would not like this game if you like games with a high degree of complexity and uh, luck. But thematically, the strength in this game is that the whole game feels like a struggle. It feels like a Cold War. It can be brutal experience, and yet that brutal experience is exactly what the game is trying to recreate. Thematically, this game is brilliant, yet you would not like this game if you don't like struggling with bad luck. Praga Caput Reini. Praga Caput Reini, a very strategic game with an excellent mechanic, with a rondelle that uh, will rotate after every turn, meaning that the benefits from taking every action change every single turn. However, the game is thematically very dry and has a lot of rules that really don't add up to anything thematically. 
So if you like a strategic game with a very interesting and innovative mechanic, you will really enjoy this, but be warned that this is a thematically very dry game with a lot of complexity and not so much payoff unless you can take enjoyment from the strategy involved there. Fertility is a game that has hardly any theme or even strategy involved at all. It's a domino placing game where as you place dominoes, you collect resources on the dominoes, which you can use to add tiles to your tableau to get victory points. The whole thing is painted up with an Egyptian theme, but it is very abstract in its gameplay. Yet what I can identify about this game that people would really enjoy is that the complexity is very low and the mechanics is very high. The strategy is that satisfying uh, level right in the middle where it has decision making that that is non-trivial, but most of what you're deciding is all up to luck anyway. That is how I try to do my board game reviews. Uh, so when I'm doing something like five games that are better than Wingspan, while I can criticize Wingspan, I can only do so within my own preferences. I don't value components nearly as much as I value theme. And I wanna see that theme come through in a way that is inspired, in a way that informs how you play the game. Wingspan, the way I see it, is a bird version of Gizmos. And Gizmos has all of the, the excellent mechanics of Wingspan in a more streamlined design, which is why I prefer Gizmos or why I prefer the five games that I put in the other video that I made. That is how I review games, but more importantly, those are the principles which I use to set up my site, theperfectboardgame.com. At theperfectboardgame.com, you can take a quiz to help you understand what your perfect board game formula is, and then you can look up games that satisfy that formula, not games that satisfy the audience at large, although you can use filters such as sorting the games by popularity, but if you want to get a different take on the games and not look at them by popularity, but according to your own preferences, you can sort them by theme, you can sort them by strategy or complexity. All of these possibilities are available at theperfectboardgame.com. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions about how I rate games, you can go ahead and put them in the comments. I do answer those comments regularly. I am also planning on expanding this video into a series where I showcase the games that best exhibit these five attributes. So the best thematic games, the best games with uh, mechanics, etc. Uh, you can be on the lookout for those videos coming soon. And there I will see you next time. Bye-bye.